What's up, geeks? Welcome, Fang Fam, and welcome, New Bloods. This is For Geeks by Geeks, the place where geeks come to geek out. And tonight, we are geeking the hell out about psychic vampirism, about the occult, about the hunt and the search for truth on ghosts, cryptids, the fae, and the like. And you guys have brought an unbelievable amount of energy. If you are live here in the tw Twitch chat, thank you so much. Who gave you the right to be this incredible? And if you're watching this back on YouTube or listening back on podcast, y'all, you done missed out. There was an actual party here in the chat and you weren't here for it, but that's okay. Because we love you anyway for spending some time here with us at FGBG. As always, I am Bozer and... Raise your hand in the chat if this is your first geek out sesh. And then raise two hands if this is your second geek out sesh. Because you were here last time when the vampire Jack Townsend graced us with his masculine, sexy presence. If you don't remember Jack Townsend, you will as soon as you see him. And as soon as you hear that blood-curdling, heart-pounding growl. I've been working on mine. It hasn't gotten any better. But... I've still been working on it. All of you, I honestly, I can't even keep up with the chat. Y'all are popping off so much, but I am so grateful for each and every one of you for showing up and especially for coming here and supporting my guests tonight because that's exactly what we are here to do. We are here to geek out with the, the internet, with everybody who needs a safe space to geek out. That's what FGBG is, and thank you for sharing it with me today. While you're there in the chat, use the question of the day, command QOTD, and let me know what's something that scared you as a kid but fascinates you now. Uh, there's lots of spooky things, a lot of things that scare us when we're young before we're too young to understand. But for me, it's pretty basic. I was afraid of the dark. Um, I had a nightlight growing up, but then I can remember the time that... I got to a rehearsal early and I walked into this like empty theater space and I didn't know how to turn the lights on, but I just walked in. I went way in the back of the house. I sat in some chairs and I just basked in the heart palpitation fear of being in the dark. And for some reason from then on, I was like fascinated with fear itself and just wanting more of it. And now I'm hyped by it. Bozer, did I not change the question of the day? Uh-oh. Yeah, I did. What's it say? Um, I missed it. Oh, well, it should say, what's the thing you're most scared of? Oh, what hobby have you always wanted to get into? No, I did not change it. Anyway. Um, that's the question that we're going to ask my guests tonight, and we're going to get right into it. We're not going to waste a single ounce of time because they've got an important project that they're working on, and they need your help to get it fully funded. And once you finish hearing about the exciting thing that they're doing and the important and impactful work that they're doing, you're going to want to support it, including me. So I'm going to move out of the way. I'm going to let them come in. And if you aren't aware of my guest tonight, give it a second because you will instantly fall in love. May I present to you, please, eclectic witch and paranormal investigator, Fen Allen Kush. Hello. <laughs> as well as founder of the modern vampire community as we know it, Michelle Ballanger. Bonsoir. And the one and only, your hero, <laughs> Jack <laughs> the Vampire Townsend. <laughs> hey, <Yeah>. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Voted most likely to become Jean Claude. I will take it, please. <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? Good. I'm busy. <laughs> Clearly. Busy. Very busy. You guys got so much going on, and I feel like I'm in the presence of literal royalty here tonight. Them. So, I mean, you. King. King. Vampire King. Yep. King. King. Bow. <laughs> so we have the king and queen themselves with us tonight in the, with the vampire community. You guys, thank you for being here. Um, I'm really excited that you allowed me to be part of this journey with you that we have yet to even begun speaking about. But before we jump jam. into it, um, tell me, 
answer the question of the day. What's something that scared you as a kid, but fascinates you today, Fen? Easy. Aliens. I was really? terrified of aliens. And now I am actively investigating them on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> when was the moment that you realized um, there was a flip? I think when I started investigating the paranormal in general, and I started mm. to like, you know, realize that just because something's different and uh, that it's not bad. And I think that's a lot, and we're trying to do that a lot with these projects too, is, is really like, you know, just because it's different doesn't mean it's something that's bad. And that's what I was taught, right? Like they were always, yeah. aliens were always bad guys. They kind of still are actually, like on the global level. It's I like know. they're intrinsically bad. Yeah. <clears throat> the whole anal probe thing's a little intimidating. Yeah, I mean, I don't want that. I still don't <laughs> want that. Then no. you just hold your breath and you get through it. To each their own. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing. Like, Shut like, up. I don't want to be like, give it to me, alien daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, what about you? What's something that scared you as a kid but fascinates you now? I'm boring because it wasn't anything spooky. I loved spooky stuff since the time I could do anything. Public speaking, which probably seems really funny given what I do now. But it's I used so to be funny. incredibly shy, like to the point where I would bite the insides of my cheeks around people so that like I, I just I what I didn't want to talk um and gaming is what got me out of that like learning to role play is what taught me how to just much more comfortably inhabit my own skin it, it is the number one fear in all the world is public speaking mm -hmm. yeah next to death which is hilarious right yeah I'd rather be dead than point. talk to a crowd Fine. Yeah, that's that's that says a lot. <laughs> it does. It's really interesting. Yeah. I also dealt with that too. I get yeah, it. No, yeah, that's gnarly. Did it twice. Right. And I out. It's fine. No big deal anymore. Uh, we're gonna get into that. Yeah. I want to hear more <laughs> about that. But first, what did Baby Jack? What was Baby Jack yeah. scared of? Who did Baby Jack? See, mine is, mine is more complicated. I'm trying to think of a way to make it not like long and drawn out. Um, drawn out, baby. I was I was scared. I, the it wasn't anything usual like you know i didn't have many fears but i think the thing that scared me was um the whatever was in my dead end when i was the thing that whatever was going on i was very terrified to walk through my dead end to get to school it was so bad that my parents put me into therapy because i would not walk through and then later in life i actually did an investigation a ghost invest uh ghost hunt into there and learned that the reason that I was so afraid was that there were certain entities that were actually in there. No, so not, way. yeah, not scared anymore because now I have an understanding. But uh, yeah, baby Jack, do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's gonna be in our heads all night. I'm gonna have to make a video for that now. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Julie, for that. Your worm is gonna be with us for the rest of our lives. <laughs> But y'all, thank you. Honestly, thank you for letting me be a part of this. Um, and if if you are unaware of Michelle or Fen or Jack, stick around because it's not going to take long. Um, so <laughs> real quick, we'll go in reverse order, starting with Jack mm. and ending with Michelle. Um, tell us a little bit about who you are and what brought you on this journey to this place of this amazing project that we're about to talk about. Oh, oh my good. Oh my, my journey is a, a wild, wild journey. My journey started two years ago when I actually came to TikTok. I had a story in my head um, that was my story, the vampire Jack Townsend, about a millennial vampire trip, tripping and fumbling everywhere he walked and learning lessons uh, upon his undead path to figuring out how to, you know, be this, the vampire king everyone knows and loves now. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I, I really wanted to put out my story. I didn't know where to go, but I saw everybody using TikTok, all these cosplayers, and I was watching and I was like, why isn't anybody utilizing this platform? It's a screen. It's a TV show mm -hmm. in your hand and nobody is using it for that. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to make a web series and I'm going to, you know, you know, do some do some acting. But secretly, deep down, 
there was this Lestat, <laughs> Lestat inside me was going, no, 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 this might be your chance to finally come out of the coffin. This might be your chance to finally be seen and be able to talk about these things. And sure enough, through a very long, very chaotic, beautiful chain of events, I was able to talk about this and be seen, be known. And part of that being seen, part of that being known, was how I actually came to be a part of season two of New Blood TV. Um, and it is still a, a mind-boggling thing to be sitting right here. I'm just sitting right here. And right there is one of my heroes, Michelle Belanger, who wrote the You can Psych almost touch him. Codex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Psychic Vampire Codex, <laughs> which was a book that actually helped me on my journey. So I love that. And I'm going to pick that question apart a little bit more on what it's fucking like existing next to one of your idols and working alongside your idols. Like, that's just wild. Um, and if anybody missed, oh my god, your your Fang fam needs to cool it. I can't get all these colors. <laughs> um, if anybody missed Jack's Geek Out Sesh, he got one all on his own. So you can find that if you use command YouTube. Go back, watch the old one, because we had too good of a time. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> and somebody was... asked earlier in the Discord, said, Poser, how do you get to talk to such amazing people? And I'm like, honestly, despite my best efforts... We somehow made an okay oppression the first time around. I don't know why or how, but <laughs> they agreed to come back. Genuineness counts for a lot. Yes, it does. Truly. Okay, you need to stop right now. It's, a big <laughs> it's too soon to cry. My okay, cry. Give it for the end. <laughs> Fen, what about you? Tell us a little bit about yourself and yeah. your journey into this project. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a big one. Um, all right. So I was living in LA at the time, working in the industry, the, the film industry in LA. They just say the industry. So I had to kind of like, I'm still learning to stop. I got to stop doing that. The, but, um, <laughs> welcome to the Midwest. We have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Da -da -ding, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I was out there. I was working for a bunch of like very large companies that were, you know, uh, basically creating things for different big shows and movies and things like that. And I was just kind of like in the rat race. And then COVID happened and uh, L.A., unlike much of this country, shut down for like a year and a half. So, I mean, it was like dead. And uh, that means all the film studios were like crickets. And so I was like, well, you know, I've always wanted to like really investigate the woo more. So I started a podcast, Follow the Woo, and I met a vampire <laughs> and I knew I wanted to make a paranormal show. I And I was like at that time on track to make one the traditional route, like through a network, you know, with a pitch mm -hmm. package for a production company. And I had already worked with somebody who was like ready to do that dang thing. And hi, Shane. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I ended up, that vampire gave me a book, The Psychic Vampire Codex, which Jack and I both geeked out about. Yeah, I have my copy here somewhere. Mm, and, and I wonder what kind of brilliant mind would have written such a book. Oh, my God. Who, who oh, could that be? I don't know. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, this this book, I, I always tell people, like, I didn't read it. I I devoured it, pardon the pun, but like in one night. And I don't know what it was. It just kind of stuck out to me. And I thought, this is so interesting. I'd love to talk to them. So I reached back out to the other vampire and I said, do you think that Michelle Belanger would talk to me? And so we were supposed to talk for like an hour and a half and we ended up talking for about five hours. Oh, um, wow. So it went well. <laughs> That's how you know it went well. It went well. And I, you know, I just kind of, I said, I want to do the show. Like, would you be interested? And I'm lucky enough that they were. The only thing was we can't go the, the like, you know, uh, rule was like, we were not going to go through the networks. And so that is how we are here. Um, you know, doing it ourselves so that we can have creative control. And so that, you know, we can basically not like lose all the cool shit that gets cut in the editing room, which mm -hmm. Michelle can talk about because Michelle mm -hmm. has experienced that directly. 
Um, so yeah, I have a really woo background. I, you know, I've been in covens for witchcraft and things like that. Um, and I've always been curious and I've always wanted to know those like major questions. Like, why are we here? What, mm -hmm. what are we doing? What, what is beyond what we think is quote unquote reality? And, uh, you know, hang out with some vampires and, and none of those questions will be answered, but it's fucking crazy. And so it's just been like a wild ride. Uh, in my experience, in my limited experience, vampires are like the best of us now. They're so great. <laughs> so great. Real quick, for anybody wondering, including myself, you're using terms like the woo. Can you define what the woo is? Yeah, that's great. So I I use woo as the like mega umbrella for all weird shit. And it's like really the biggest umbrella. So like it's everything from like psychics and witchcraft to then like ghosts and aliens, like all high strangeness. And then even like, I don't know, remote and viewing. It, and it's part of reclaiming what is often used as a derogatory yeah. term of like, that's woo woo which I've heard from everyone from like, like Carl Sagan types where it's like, oh, these woo woo beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself would frequently use woogity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that is so funny. Cause my, my whole life I've been talking like, oh, you're just woo woo that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'm like, I am not, I'm excited and I'm optimistic and I'm yeah. like I'm curious, like that's not woo woo, it's cool. So I love that you're reclaiming that. Yeah, yeah, that was the point of the, the name of the show was like, well, and, you know, I identify as a witch for the same reason, because that was a derogatory term as well. Mm -hmm. so, Interesting. So I have, what'd you say? So is vampire. Yeah, so is vampire. Exactly. Which. Yeah. And we're going to define some other terms here yeah. in a moment. <laughs> but first, I'd love to hear from Queen Vampire herself, <laughs> Michelle Ballanger. Okay, where did I start? Um, Many eons well, ago. Yeah, well, really, a very long time ago, uh, in a galaxy far, far away. If you are into vampires and you have seen a vampire documentary made from the middle 90s onward, if I was not directly on it, I was in it behind the scenes, including uh, consulting on True Blood. Yeah, and I am. There's a CSI, uh, original CSI episode that references my work directly. So like I'm kind of in a lot of things, not just vampires and things, but if you recognize my face, especially with a blindfold, you've seen me on Paranormal State, Portals to Hell, uh, Conjuring Kesha, and all the weird ghost hunting shows, which I just sort of fell into by accident. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Uh, if you I think that's the only way to fall into it. It, it, was, it was fun. Uh, if you recognize my voice uh, and you're familiar with the music group Nox Arcana uh, or more sp in more of a niche, uh, Xyla's Esoterica or Urn's, um, the, the, the old musical group Urn, I am also a vocalist and a writer of music. Uh, my books include, of course, the Vampire Codex that everybody's like, holy moly, what, what is this? Uh, it's your fault. You did this. It's Oh, it's totally <laughs> You did this! I, well, you know, they say write the thing that you need in the world. So 1994, I sat down to do that. Um, and in 2004, I actually managed to get a publisher to publish it. Uh, although that, that was that was the whole process. Like a book by, you know, on vampires written by a vampire was not something anybody in the early 2000s was willing to buy. Oh, um, I'm just so excited that it's come. The discussion has come such a long way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I lived through the satanic panic. Like, uh -huh. I watched Stranger Things, and I'm like, that's us. That 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 was me. I was in high school at the same time these kids were in high school. I was 11, um, and also we were playing D&D &D just that much. And so we have you to thank not only for the vampire community, but also for being the predecessor of making D&D &D cool. Yeah, well... Stranger Things didn't do what you did. Thing I, I tend to downplay, but... I, I I literally literally wrote the book on it. I wrote the ethical codes for it. Uh, if th there's certain terms at this point that I coined, uh, and they're so widespread in the community that people are like, "That's just been around forever." And I'm like, "Oh, honey, no." But that's fine. Like, just just it's great that everybody's using it. Uh, you can find my work on Sacred Hyphen Text. The person who founded that site. Uh, made an effort to get like the influential like theological and spiritual writings and made a point of reaching out to me and like the only other occult group that he reached out to was the temple of psychic youth 
uh, and has, so I donated my stuff to that site for free in perpetuity. So you can find the vampire ritual book and an early version of the codex on there online, because I believe information should be free when it's important to people. Uh, yeah. I love you all already. And it's only been like 10 minutes. <laughs> we love you too. <laughs> and I'm probably, it's probably clear. I'm older than I look. Much by like thousands or millennia. Yeah. yeah I was just going to say, yeah. oh, you know, we won't get into that part. Take it like, right out of my mouth. The official persona of Michel Belanger is a uh, bit around for five decades. So I want to know who your previous persona was in that lifetime. Mm. We could get into <laughs> we'll get into it in a moment. But right off the bat, I want everybody to know we're here talking about an amazing Kickstarter that has what? Four days? Three days? Uh, four happening. days? Going to go in four days. We're in the home stretch. We're, we're in the butt pucker moment of like, can we? Are we going to do this? I don't know. Like, will a miracle occur on the last day? Because yeah. it's going to take a miracle. So we've raised, we have raised uh, like about $44,000 in the last three weeks. And, oh, wow. And we have five days to go to raise about 24 four ish more and yeah if you Another could help nice us for pushing, but yeah i mean you could you could give us a little more that'd be great <laughs> but you are aiming for be nice sixty six thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars to fund not what, what just one series but two series and complete the filming and editing of is that a second season or just this first so the uh, funding is for two series. One is long form, one is episodic. Okay. Um, all like final filming, like you said, post-production and then pre-production for season two, which we've actually already started. And we've put a butt ton of our own money into this. So we definitely have skin sure. in the game. Of course. Um, we have over a hundred hours of footage already. And um, we really just, you know, we, we want to do it ourselves and you have to prove the first time around that you can before mm -hmm. anybody gives you any, you know, like if anybody notices you. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, this is something that Michelle and I bring up a lot is that like one episode, one mother effing episode of your favorite paranormal show on network TV costs anywhere from like a hundred to $250,000 for a single. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I know people sometimes think like, oh, this is a lot. It's nothing. This is two full seasons plus yeah. pre-production for season two for two shows. Well, and we, we had some like perfect like things come together. Like I own a haunted Airbnb in Oberlin, so we could put everybody up of in my do. space. <laughs> what, we, what don't you have? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, 24,000. A husband. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. It's better. I prefer that. I, I'm very mm -hmm. fond of my wife. She's pretty fucking amazing. She's so great. Yeah, no, she really seems like keeps keeps me all together. Uh, but like, so I I was like, okay, well, we don't need to worry about putting people up in hotels. We can have everybody under the same roof. Bonus, you can do ghost hunts just on your own time if you want. It's a very fun, cozy haunting. Uh, <laughs> but like, there were a lot of things that like we could collectivize, pull together and make it work in a way that like, you know, if we were trying to like scout locations, trying to like put everybody up in hotels on locations, I mean, flying people out and, and arranging stuff, like having that extra car at one point to just be like, oh, oh my God. turn this car, you want to just like borrow this car and like drive off with it, just bring it back. That um, was so good. Yeah, like we had too much equipment. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was like scrappy. We were scrappy, mm. but the thing is like our DP, our cinematographer has worked on book smart, um, with Kate Blanchett, with Kevin Bacon, with like on the show transparent on Amazon. Like, okay. so it's not, it, it's scrappy in that, like, we were very resourceful. It's not yeah. scrappy in content or quality. That's, that's the thing. It's like, um, it's like that garage band, but you find out that it's actually like, you know, Ozzy and friends, but it's a garage <laughs> band. <laughs> I mean, 
I do love Ozzy, but like, are, can we compare ourselves to him? He's a god. I work for his son, I suppose I can. That's true, you do, yeah. that's fair. <laughs> of course you I do. With, I agree with this. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew right off the bit that we are here for a Kickstarter. Use command Kickstarter, support it. And if you're watching this back on YouTube or listening, the links are below. It might be done if you didn't jump on the links quick enough, but hopefully we can get you that next 24,000 in the next three days. Um, yeah. But four for days. anybody, four days, four days. Don't speed it up, Bozer. <laughs> By the time this is live on YouTube and podcast tomorrow, it'll be three. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. that. No, like time, time, it is, it is just, Yes. Oh, I do want to say something that um, you yeah. might not know, Bozer, is that we are doing a contest that just mm. started today. And the Fang fam better be listening because Perk there's up. a really amazing prize for this contest. So basically, um, if you pledge and then uh, email us at newblood, uh, TV at gmail, we will give you a referral code. You, you don't need to explain all this. Just go to our website, newblood.tv, and then there's a contest. Click that, and it explains it all to you. I will tell you, though, the important part, the part you want to hear, is that Jack Townsend will be part of the prize. You will get a one-on-one -on -one call with Jack Townsend for 15 minutes, and that includes growls. <gasps> it's worth it. It's worth it. Guys, do it. <laughs> yes. You also get a psychic reading, an astrology reading. You get uh, Michelle's amazing yeah, contemplation can't, can't card. Put in a couple of the cards, yeah. Yeah, and you get a custom-made uh, paranormal investigation device. So that's whoever gets the most pledges um, by sharing it will will win. So you know, I'm just saying we've gotten a lot of people who have already uh, emailed us, and they are like doing their dang thing. So you should also do your dang thing. Do the dang thing. I'm gonna change a uh, a command night or not night new blood. Right now it's going to your Instagram, but screw that. It's gonna go to your website so people can easily go support that contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. And update. Good. <laughs> um, I'm going to fight for that because. Yesterday, I got to talk to Shane on the phone, but Jack was only in the background, and I was like, <laughs> I can't hear a growl this well in my ears. So. We can fix that in like two seconds if you want. <gasps> okay. Hit us. Hit us with a growl. Yeah? Yeah. yeah I'm, we I'm, need it. Hit me, Jackie, one more time. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm trying to decide. Jack and on are off. Oh, I like the jacket, but it's a little warm. So, it's like, it's warm. Yeah, I'm it, sitting it, here. I'm warm. sitting here, and I'm like, oh my yeah, god! Just like, take it off. Just, take uh, it off. And see, as soon as I take it off, the camera gets all steamy and blurry. Wow, that's just from the heat under your <laughs> carriage. That's a steaming oh. undercarriage. <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay. <laughs> It never gets old. It never, never. gets old. <laughs> the last time when we clipped that, that and we posted it, like I, I'm not embarrassed to say how many times I listened to it. Over <laughs> and over and over. It's like, <laughs> how? Where? What is this feeling? Why? <laughs> what is this feeling? <laughs> what is this feeling? <laughs> Taking over my body. <laughs> Don't use your vampire magic on me. We can't help it that way. <laughs> just, we just built this way. <laughs> Speaking of, as we're continuing this conversation and learning more about the TV series, uh, there's going to be great terms like vampire, like witch, like maybe mystic. And can you just take a second, uh, Jack, to define some of those? Just so if anybody's unclear, if you're not part of the Fang fam already, uh, you are now part of the discussion. I want to define, I will take, I'll take vampire. I'll okay. Because I feel I feel like I have a very basic like <coughs> explanation. We need basic. I think um, you're gonna be quicker than me about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna um, be an 800 page book. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing book though. Um, a vampire is someone, in my opinion, that and in my experience, someone that requires and benefits from being gifted consensually. Because consent is always important. Consent is key. 
as we say, um, external pranic vital energies, or as you would call them, life force. Uh, there are other nuances and other things as well. Everyone's experience can differ here and there, but that is the base of what a vampire is. Now we know. The Short more version, you know. we feed. Mm. Ooh, with the music in the background, it's like kind of... That was... That was <laughs> I love it. Out of the mouth of Mama Queen Vampire, <laughs> I just can't. I feel like these days I'm mostly like cranky grandpa vampire. But... <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> You're allowed. I think by this point you are allowed. Oh, I have seen some shit. <laughs> Alright, so that's that's vampire. Fen, define witch you were using earlier. Ooh la la. Um that's a tough one. So well we talked a little bit about how it's a derog it was a derogatory term for essentially herbalists and uh the healers and uh hey, I get you my little pretty and your little dog too. <laughs> <laughs> That. I love oh, that. that. That's my clip of the night. Done. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that, I, what else is there to say? Uh, no, but really like doulas and things like that. And then, you know, the patriarchy in short was like, that's scary and tried to eradicate that. But now I think, um, you know, there is a reclamation of it and it, it essentially means like simplistically somebody who is like actively using some kind of magic, like some kind of uh, magician, um, like whether it's spell work or psychic work or yeah, you're a witch, Julie. Um, and in some cases, I guess uh, it could mean that you're also worshiping like pa pagan gods, but it's not necessarily that case. It doesn't yeah. have to. Okay, okay. Well, the lines between things get a little fuzzy because there are plenty of vampires who practice magic and there are witches who practice magic and it's similar but slightly different magic. And in some ways, it is helpful to think of these as magical identities, hmm. as things that you identify with as like, this is what me makes me feel most comfortable in my skin for my lived experience, my relationship to psychic phenomena, energy work, all of this weird stuff in the world. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm here for it. So now you know. If you didn't, if you're not part of the Fang Fam, now you're part of the <laughs> vocabulary. We have the vernacular. So then tell us a little bit about these TFE series. We have New Blood and we have Inhuman Beings. We get a two for one with one Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so we started with New Blood, which is, the, you know, basically what came from us going to Michelle's Airbnb and doing a bunch of weird paranormal experiments and seeing what it's like to be fed on by a vampire and seeing what it's like to um, do energy work with vampires. And then that kind of did its own thing. It like, you know, was like this web that went out synchronistically to a bunch of other things, you know, uh, Faye and uh like i can't even, i can't tell you everything but but basically just weird shit but why uh i, I, I think <laughs> new, why? Blood, new blood is like alice in wonderland when alice mm. goes down the rabbit hole and you fan are alice and i am the cheshire cat yeah you definitely are <laughs> that's 100 percent accurate can I, can I be the mad hatter you absolutely so on brand it's way well too done. Done. <laughs> you My are the jabber definitely the white rabbit though like mm -hmm. the timekeeper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really about awakenings and about, and, and the show itself sort of, you know, like the cast and crew, there were part of the crew who thought they were just going to like, you know, like be second camera, be camera person. That's it. Whatever sound person. Uh -huh. But very quickly we understood that that turned into like, that, that that's wasn't the case it was like we were all going on this weird wild ride everybody cried i mean it was like intense and um it sort of turned into this like like i said initiatory experience that then other people that we've connected with synchronistically jack included are now involved in and um it, it seems to be sort of like just this weird effect that keeps you know like triggering multiple people um, that we're supposed to work with and that we're supposed to like do magic with so that's the first enough 
it, it feels like from what I've heard tonight and what I've known previously, it feels like things are, like you said, synchronistically and almost like they're meant to happen. Like the fact that this geek out sesh was meant to happen. I didn't have somebody scheduled tonight for yeah. I never had did because I'm like, eh, it's 4th of July. But then I'm like, man, I wish I did. The moment I had that thought, Shane emailed me or hit me up on Instagram wow. and said, hey, we are doing this really cool thing. Is, do you have any room on your schedule? It has to happen in the next nine days. I'm like, um, yeah, actually, on Monday three. <laughs> that's now. Like, that's been regular. At this point, it's like, oh, well, that's just how stuff works, right? Right. And that's yeah. why I have no doubt that you're going to hit your goal in three days, four days, three, four days. It's, it's hard days. to be like, ah, but is it going to happen? Oh, no. Like, all of these cool things we've promised won't exist. Like, the cool mm -hmm. Pride Demon t-shirts and, like, all of the other stuff and those planchettes, like... There's a whole bunch of yeah. things that we're like, we're just going to make this swag for it. But if we don't meet the goal, nobody will ever see the swag for real. It'll be sad. Yeah, mm -hmm. help us make this goal. So yeah. hit use command Kickstarter. Go to the link. Support. Make it happen. Because if there's anybody worthy of making this happen, it's got to be this team right here. The yeah. OG vampire. The TikTok king of vampire. And, and just fan. And just fan. <laughs> and just fan. The incredible fan. <laughs> I'm Alice. I have to be the impetus. You have to have an impetus. Also, um, you have to like talk to regular people as yeah. like, like a TV person. <laughs> That's right. I have to do all and, that. Stuff. And like, there's a certain sort of like manner that one generally needs to adopt for that. That I am just over. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, you are. There's cranky grandpa. <laughs> cranky grandpa's here. Um, the other show in human beings is sort of was birthed out of this, this just desire again, like what Michelle said earlier about the book, you know, like, uh, you know, if you, you, you make what you need to see in the world, like if you don't see it, you make it. And so we just kept watching paranormal TV and we were like, Oh my God, like there's nothing out there that really is diverse and also if that was you, could you knock again? If that was you, could you knock again? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Or it's not even like that, it's like the aggressive version of oh, that. Oh like, yeah, yeah. The knock! No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm hearing knocking right now. I thought there was a real ghost. Speaking. I did too at first, and then I was like, oh, we're doing a thing. Oh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I will just occasionally do random impressions. I have broken myself of randomly spouting off Shakespeare or foreign language quotes, because... Well, don't stop. Oh, yeah. That's 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 Theater <laughs> kid, I'm here for it. Oh, you're in good company. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't like company. do all the, the singing that usually would otherwise happen because copyright. <laughs> I really need to get on TikTok so I can just <laughs> sing at people with whatever soundtrack is in my jingle brain. Like that just needs to happen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you were well, talking. Well, like, they'll, they'll shut it down even if it's my own music, where it's like, but I own the copyright. You've infringed yeah. the copyright. It's my copyright. It's mine. I, I copyright. Oh, am I infringing on myself? Yeah, like, how come on. Well, and, and like the back end thing of like trying to approve that is ridiculous. Like, there's so many hoops. So many hoops. Like, don't even right. get me started on the Big Brother and the like, don't help me, internet. Don't help me, social media. It's just, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. becoming cranky grandpa in that too. Mm -hmm. Same. Mm -hmm. Same. We anyway, all... that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> that over there. Um, but you were talking about how these shows are going to be different than your typical paranormal TV. Yes. So, I mean, it kind of seems ob it's obvious that the first show that we've been talking about, New Blood, is a little bit different and that it Unlike is a deep anything. dive. Yeah. I mean, it's very much like you know, it's a documentary on vampires, you know, that's, I, to, I mean, of course there have been some and Michelle has been in all of them, I think. Um, not like this, you know, not There's like- one that I turned down. I would not go on Tyra Banks. Oh, oh, see that's, I, I do want to know more about that. <laughs> I do. Um, put a pin in that, would you? Yeah. <laughs> um, but the second show is, about oh my ADD is kicking in. Um, I'm sorry, it's long. I'll read it out loud for the podcast. Yes. I'm a 55 yes. year old solitary practitioner, always learning, but never had thought these things were interconnected as they actually are. Y'all have mm -hmm. my brain recalibrating. Thank you for that and all you were trying to accomplish. Yes, that, well that that's that a perfect exactly. comment. That's, that's a perfect comment. Yeah, 
That's why I keep doing this. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Because that's exactly, I was about to say that, Morfiana, not in that way. You said it much better. But I was just going to say that uh, what's missing is that um, these communities are really factioned out. Um, and I talk about this a lot. A lot of the paranormal uh, TV community is very like, male white dominated and there's not a lot of di diversity so you know from that angle we're going in you know uh with a more diverse crew or all queer the entire cast and crew which are like is amazing that that happened that way amazing um, like what can i pause you on that for a second was yeah. that intentional or i mean not way? really <laughs> no i think like it was weird. It just kind of happened. And there were, I mean, of course, when I was like looking for people, I was looking for people who are, who are going to be like very open-minded. And I think that just tends to attract more queer folks. Um, and so at the end of the day, I was like, do, I remember doing like the schedule one day and I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> well, like, it's, just, that, that TV, it's that TV trope where people are like, well, you know, it's it, it's never going to be like where you have a whole house full of all queer people. It's like, well, actually, you absolutely are because you all know you can trust one another mm -hmm. in the same way that like people will like you create your own group of folks who share the same values that you do, who go through the same community. problems that you do, who are willing to hear you, see you, support you. And, you know, now more than ever, we all need to stick together. Yeah. Make paranormal queer again. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. And so that was one of the elements that was, you know, diversified. But also, um, it was from like a paranormal investigative perspective, too. I mean, we, a lot of the shows focus heavily on tech. Okay. All of the shows focus heavily on tech. And we, and sometimes they have psychics come in. Like, I'll be fair and say they do. But, we wanted to like take it steps further. Like what kind of the weirdest experiment you could think of, we're gonna do that, you know? Um, we're gonna do rituals. We're gonna, you know, we're mixing all of these things together in this like very weird smorgasbord of uh, so, investigation. You wanna know a behind the scene thing for like yeah. why heck is the thing? So if you remember Ghost Hunters originally was on the sci-fi channel. Yeah. <laughs> legitimately behind the scenes the execs were like we have to focus on tech because our audience is into sci-fi and they want it to be science like they, they the, the the execs couldn't open their head to be past that it's why you never see psychics or any sort of like really woo woo stuff on there it wow. to be tech because it's the sci-fi channel mm -hmm. Which, that tracks. But, but it's like it establishes a certain trope that then, well, uh -huh. this was successful, so everything has to look like this. Right. Which I love that Michelle knows some of those mm. like secret behind the scenes things. Of it's, course she does. It's incredible. Like, that conversation, <laughs> like, like conversations with the people off screen to know they've had, I won't name names, I won't call people out who aren't open about it, but people in those shows had extraordinary experiences that they weren't allowed to talk about as part of their like persona uh -huh. because it was too weird. And so it had to be just a bunch of plumbers doing plumber stuff with tech. Like, mm -hmm. yep. and, and that's the thing. That like, that's, my, that's, why, that's why my stipulation was no network. I have worked mm -hmm. with networks. I know what the pitfalls are. Okay. They come in, the, the execs don't know what we're actually about and they don't care. They no, have and they a fake it. way of looking at the world. I think that this, is very obvious at this point with what's going on with HBO Max and like you can see everything happening right now. Mm -hmm. Like it's all out in the opening. Yep. And I'm tired of it. I'm done with it. I won't work with it anymore. So help us because yeah. when you do it yourself, you have to raise your own funds. <laughs> and how amazing yeah. would that be? No, yeah. For you to raise these funds and basically give the networks a big middle finger and show that we can tell our own important, valuable stories when we do it together. We, we've been like trained to think that networks are the only real way to get the message out, but that's not true. We're on a Twitch <laughs> stream, we're on a YouTube stream, we're with the King, the Vampire King of TikTok. We have so many other options to tell stories now. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that we don't have is the same like structural level of monetary support yep. that could just casually pop off $250,000 per episode for Paranormal State. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and you're using your money so much more efficiently and effectively. 
I yeah, I don't even get me going on the waste. Like just the amount of stuff that like people just buy and then like you've got hefty bags of just like for one episode we just bought like I don't know fifty of this one thing, people use three of it and we're just throwing it out now. Like that also hits me on a sustainability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, before yeah. we go far too down the yeah, rabbit yeah, I hole I won't of go into the stitching bitch right? griping about <laughs> which okay. we all could. I have war mm -hmm. stories. Um, tell me, speak to the process and speak to the experience that you guys have discovered about yourselves, about the pr this important topic, mm -hmm. um, the things that maybe they you wouldn't get watching the show. So I'm I'm gonna jump in with that because yeah. what Fen kind of downplays with the new blood part of our series, especially, is what's really unique about that is Fen is chronicling their own initiatory experience. Mm -hmm. and awakening and like this messy intimate personal process of ripping off layers of presupposed identity and really digging into what do i believe and what does that mean for me and mm -hmm. crumpling it on camera yeah it's embarrassing so funda so you can see how <laughs> embarrassed i was <laughs> not the entire time but there are I, moments like we don't fake anything we keep it all so you're gonna see all the yeah like there's a self -awareness. ridiculous shit. you're a documentarian first so you know to keep the camera running even though you're like curled up in the fetal position yeah. but also i think that that goes yeah. very far for letting people know that it's not all like we totally know what we're doing and it's a very easy thing to go into these things and like we're totally in charge. No, we're just as messy as everybody else. Mm -hmm. That sounds so vulnerable. How did oh you get through that, Fen? I mean, <laughs> I haven't yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a huh. of letting everybody else see it. We'll be like, yeah, oh, I mean, once it's a meme, how are we going to feel? And once it's a yeah. game, like, like you're just like, you're right. like me crying on the, yeah. yeah. Well, I think, you know, I, I just have to keep telling myself that I'm making this for, I, I think Jack, you say it so well, um, that like, I forget how you said it earlier, but you know, if you are yourself and you are honest, that attracts a certain crowd and, you know, the, those are my people. So if, if other people are having awakenings or if other people are feeling, you know, like they're having some kind of spiritual initiatory experience, then to me, I, I have to keep that in my mind and then it makes it worth it. Um, but there are times where, I mean, I truly, that it's like this internal conflict because I would be like on the bed, you know, have like crying be, or maybe being like an asshole because I did too much energy work or something. Yeah. And I would be like, are you getting this? Like, make sure you're getting me being an asshole because I don't want it to be chopped up and fake. So I, I might really have a hard time with the uh, extensive editing process. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you should be allowed to edit. <laughs> yeah. I know, right, yeah, fair. I can't imagine the, what that would be like to not only document yourself in a day you know like that's such a vulnerable process to show behind the scenes because social media has just gotten so good like we've all gotten so good at, at showcasing only what we want but yeah. that is exacerbated by the fact that you are going through a very personal and probably confusing new so confusing. exciting <laughs> like what the fuck in, in your history and it's all on camera yeah, <laughs> it sure is. Yeah, it's a tough, it's a doozy. It really is. Wow. Yeah. yeah I, I've taught people and guided them through this process for several decades now. I've never had anybody be ballsy enough to be like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to chronicle this in video <laughs> and also share it with the world. <laughs> I don't know if it's ballsy or stupid. Well, TBD. <laughs> or, or, yeah. I mean... <laughs> You got to teach, you got to teach for it to borrow, uh, like Betty White. You got what? You've got the peaches for it to borrow Betty White. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh God, loved her. Okay, but you keep talking about the process, and and yeah, uh, Michelle, would you mind defining a little bit about that process of what you're talking about, and <laughs> kind of walk us through that journey a little bit? Mm. So I coined a term called awakening um, that was equally informed by my re comparative religions uh, classes on Buddhism and Dune, 
where there's like this moment, this sort of aha moment where you just awaken to the fact that reality is much bigger and wilder than you believed, trusted, were taught, were, were forced to accept. Um, and it's, there's often like a singular moment that you can kind of point to, but it's actually a series of moments that sort of like hit you at a tipping point of like, oh, oh, there's, there's questions. I have questions. Where do I even find the answers? Uh, and it's an incredibly vulnerable moment. And mm -hmm. some people will hit that aha moment and they just go, oh no, nope. And they, they put themselves in a little hermit crab world and then just kind of keep going. Um, and and that's, that's a valid response because it's scary to live in a world that doesn't have easily mm -hmm. defined boundaries for what's real, for what we can do, for how people communicate, for the, the, fact, the idea for some people the very possibility that spirits actually exist and are sentient entities is too much. Mm -hmm. So, so having this aha moment where you're like, the world's bigger. Oh, it's not just the world. I'm bigger than I thought. Like there's more going on in me than I, than I even know what to do with. How do I control this? What are the answers? Uh, and so one of the reasons that I wrote the book that I did is when I went through that, there was nothing. Like there was, there was no kind of book. Like there were some, you know, movies and things that were all fiction of like, I think vampire is the best word for me, but obviously I'm not Christopher Lee. I'm not Dracula. Like it's not the same thing, but there's still certain things I do have in common. What, what even is that? And finding that there are occult texts and magical texts that, that talk about it, that a fun thing, Bram Stoker, was into vampires partly as much as he was because he was part of one of the occult societies and many of his friends were really were, were psychic mm -hmm. vampires and psychic vampirism were a whole thing like and and i can i could give you an entire college dissertation about that i will spare you it's on i'm sure day. you could it's amazing yeah. though yeah it's, it's fun it's stuff incredible but the reason that we start seeing like echoes of ourselves in people's fiction is mm -hmm. they were processing their own stuff yeah. In many cases with that. Uh, so, you know, at this point now, there's a whole worldwide vampire community. There's websites um, and like anything on the web, there's going to be some really good. There's going to be some really bad. There's going to be some people who are just grifters who are taking advantage of the fact that nobody knows how to tell the difference between the good information and the bad information. And yep. you, the new person, have to figure out, like, how do I navigate this? Uh, and well, if you're you lucky, you find one or two codex people. By Michelle. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, if you're lucky, you find at least one person who can be kind of your guide that you can sound stuff off. I would say that the best case is someone who is willing to say, "This is what my journey was," but gives the person the room to define their own journey. Mm -hmm. Say that it is a red flag if somebody is like, "Oh, you think you're this? Here is exactly how you must be." education not indoctrination yeah i love that and and jack i'm going to commend you for a second because the last time you were here like you sparked some thoughts and maybe some ideas and some new thoughts in me and so after the stream we talked at length for a little while longer and that's exactly what he did michelle he was like okay i'm going to tell you a little bit about mm. my journey if it resonates with you at all cool if not cool here's he said, go read the Psychic Vampire Codex. I mean, every theater kids work yeah. with energy. Everybody has yes. been on a physical stage, knows what energy is, has probably mm -hmm. done like energy ball exercises and stuff that we do. Yeah. Is like little, oh my God. Little, and you don't even think of it as mystical or magical. That's exactly it. Because <laughs> That's exactly it. You feel it. You know exactly what that is. You yes. know instantly on a performance if the audience is giving you energy back to your performance or if they're just sucking the life out of you because we would mm -hmm. always dread that like thursday performance where it was the nursing home crew like the blue hairs yeah. and they would just sit very neatly like watching oscar wilde salome because this was their chance to get out in the week <laughs> but they didn't know what was going on you're telling yourself they're enjoying and, it i swear yeah, they're enjoying it i swear just pouring more and more and more of yourself out and by the time you're done you're just like punk and and exhausted in a way that like it takes you days to come back from yeah mm -hmm more so than those times where you can just feel it flipping between you and the audience. And where you leave feeling higher yeah. than you showed up. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Performers, the performers I love are performers like Tori Amos or Dolly Parton, who are oh. clear, explicit that this is an energy exchange, that a performer is essentially a psychic vampire. And the trick is to make sure that you put out as much as you take in because there's an alchemy that mm -hmm. happens with that, where everybody goes away with more than they came in with. Yeah, I love that. Um, um, <laughs> oh, hold on. I know if I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling rocked by this, mm. Jack Townsend. How, how are you feeling and how have you felt throughout this process of working as like a side by side cohort of this person who basically founded this life that you've created? It is when when I tell you it is it is surreal. There is no other word that I can use. It <laughs> is, you know, there are moments where I look back on my life and I look at where I was even five years ago. Yeah, where I, look at where I was ten years ago, and at this point, I can look at my life three years ago, and I look at now, and I'm just like, how the hell did I get here? This is incredible, and the honor of being able to work. And being able to, to talk, to even just discuss with the incredible Michelle Boulanger is is wild. It's a wild feeling. Um, I, I I wish I could put it into more words. I really can't because still to this day, still to now, I am still flabbergasted. And, <laughs> and there are moments, I will not lie to you. I'm very, I think you know me very well. I am very um, transparent. Yeah. And very outspoken. Um I have tremendous moments of uh, what is it, what is it called? It's called um, uh, what is it? A word time of brain fart. Um, it's oh, I'll, I'll, starstruck. It's it's starstruck and uh, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was an imposter mm -hmm. syndrome where I'm like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> like, where am I right now? I will say again, being genuine goes very far. Yeah. It does. Because I've really? noticed you've been a little quiet tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and I can only suspect that it's because you are like sitting in the front row of some people that have shaped your life in such a big way. And I'm just loving that I get to be front row for that moment for you. <laughs> you know what? It, it is also that um, kind of the way that I am is that I, I very much am very used to letting other people con converse and talk. And I always, I'm very, very patient. I always wait my turn because, you know, that's just the way I, that, that I am. And on top of it, these two have so many insightful and important things to say. So I get to sit here and I go, I'm part of the audience at times. And I go, oh, this is great. Like, oh, wait, I'm on a screen right now. This is, oh, wait, that's right. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> part of my French. Um, but Man. yeah, I, it's just surreal. It's amazing. And I'm honored beyond words. <sighs> Jack is incredible. I mean, it's a mutual admiration club. We fucking love Jack. Woo. You know, it was just, again, the synchronicities tied us together. And we were like, two seconds of knowing Jack, it felt like we were just like, this oh. is somebody that we need to be working. Mm -hmm. Like, we just felt this this connection to, like, needing to go further in the narrative uh, of, the, of awakening with this person. Yeah. So... Jack is like we're just as enthusiastic about being hang like being able to hang out with Jack as as I, I think he is with Michelle. And yeah, and, and for me it's always been community over competition. So like we we help each other, like we lift each other up, we get further if we are look like really helping one another. You see somebody who's fantastic mm -hmm. in what you do, and you're like, let's do it yeah. together, as opposed to I'm so jealous that they're so successful. Like, yeah. You know, that second one doesn't help anybody. No. Yeah, including exactly. you. No. And I, I, I'm very new to this, like, culture, really, that I'm finding this is a like, whole entire community mm -hmm. that I had no idea existed until mm -hmm. really hanging out with Jack. But I love that, Michelle, you created the foundation. You paved the way. And I don't mean this as lightly as I'm saying it, but, Jack, you made it sexy. Like you made it accessible, <laughs> right? Like you, you made the conversation about vampirism. You sure did. 
um, within hand to anybody by putting it on TikTok and paving the way in, in that way. And so I just love that you both are coming together and Fen, you had the immense mind to put it together and to document it. And I think the world needs it and deserves to see it on a platform that isn't a network. Yeah! Yes, exactly. <laughs> Well, exactly. and, and for authentic historicity, I'm not the only one. Like, I am not the only, like, sure. elder, founder, influencer within the, our community. But when it comes to psych this type of vampirism, that, that is me. Like, like without hyperbole, I wrote the book on it. Um, and, like, pushed to get us accepted within, like, the, the wider community. Yeah. I'm just so thrilled that you... <laughs> the discussion has come to this point. Like, what does that feel like? Like, awesome. Michelle, like you, you felt like you had to do this all by yourself. Mm -hmm. And here we are with an entire chat excited, all of which have either been part of the conversation or discovering their own awakening. And it wouldn't have happened if someone didn't write the book on it. Like, what does that felt like with this evolution of the conversation? I, I keep a personal list of names that I don't have to share with anybody, but like on the days where things are hard or the world is hard, uh, I take out the list of people who have personally let me know that my work saved them, like saved their lives, like help them get out of a dark place, help them wow. get out of bad situations, just help them figure out who they were and get comfortable on their skin. And there is nothing more gratifying yeah, than knowing say. that there is somebody out there creating art helping people teaching people doing fantastic things and i had some tiny part in helping them get to a place where they felt comfortable doing that yeah i'm reading the comments and they're all so heartwarming <laughs> i feel i feel so bad because honestly y'all who are here in the chat I'm not used to this many people in my chat. Like, I love this. <laughs> you, bring, you know, bring right, the I see thunder. the number just keep going up. And uh -huh. I'm like, bring the thunder. <laughs> I, 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 should, I should bring a little bit night. more of like, the whole like vampire thing because, uh, yeah, well, just look up the Shadow Dancer video on, on YouTube because I, I have hit the point where I just don't bother to do my makeup anymore, frankly. I wrote it down. <laughs> I got Shadow Dancer. I've got Itchio. Which that yeah. we're gonna talk about that on some other time. Got yep. Nox Arcana, Sacred Text. Wow. Yeah. I Come think something with me into the darkness. With this blood, you will be blessed. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Oh That's a remix. Oh, I love it. I love it. Search it, y'all. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it actually is like amazing. I mean oh, but, 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 let's see. Gaze into depths of emerald absinthe and plunge through the twists of the labyrinth. Gather at crossroads and chant to the wind. Gather in graveyards and revel in sin. Our innocence lost and our faith destroyed. Spiraling down into lightless void. Drunken on dreams and ceaselessly sleeping. Here in the garden, the angels are weeping. The angels are weeping. Woo! Ooh, yeah. Some witchy shit. I love it. Gorgeous. I own that one, so if anybody gives you crap about it, that's my copy. Yeah. So. Those the lyrics are spellbound. Yeah. We Gorgeous. need to put that in season one. Oh, that, 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 that's, that was my ballad for the vampire community. Like, that, that was the first big thing. Like, the coolest was performing that live to about 1,500 people in the French Quarter one year. Uh, Were they all vampires? It was a mixed crowd, but it was like, uh, like, oh god, the the guys from Seraphim Shock, uh, Electric Hellfire Club, uh, like just was a ton of people. Yeah, absolutely a duet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, we. That'll be badass. Oh, we have to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Yeah, I, I've been okay. The thing that will get me on TikTok will be TikTok duets. Oh, let's do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, please, please, please. Yes. Yeah, because because. Omega Jones from who's Critical Bard like does little duets and I was like I actually have a little FOMO here because I would totally get down on that. Oh, let's do it! Yes. Oh, we have. We're to gonna get you TikToking, Michelle. Uh, oh, yeah, please. I mean, oh, my goodness. I'm I'm either gonna like honestly, my fear is 
when I take to a social media platform, I take to it, and you may just never see me anywhere but TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, you it. Oh, oh my goodness, TikTok. On, on, I can't rant and rave enough about TikTok, mm -hmm. honestly. Do you know, I know a really, a really good TikToker on, uh, mm. uh, is he, he's even in the vampire community. You should check him out. Oh, wait, that guy? Like, I've, I, I think No, he no, no, not him. No, he not doesn't him. have very many <laughs> the other one. It's not me. The other one. Uh, Shane, Shane Townsend. It's that one. That's no, it. That's it. Oh my God. She's incredible. Oh, she's incredible. Oh she's, to, to be honest, oh, she is incredible. She, is she incredible. really is incredible. She really is incredible. I, I do have to incredible. give her props because, like, while... Like Jack maybe gets to be the face of it, and this all happened, y'all, because of Shane Townsend. Yeah. Oh, you know, put it she together, is like contacted, She's a made it happen. She was my point person for contact. She's so fucking organized. No, she's amazing. She's like, what are we doing? Oh, we okay. let me just have all of the hands all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I'm like, like, were you an octopus? What the fuck happened? Like, so, oh my gosh. It's Since amazing. we're talking about Shane, I have to just say for everyone who is obsessed with your Red Queen, she yes. is incredible. Seriously, I have worked with so many producers and so many production assistants and so many different people um, on casting crew and sets and everything. And you, it is, re I'm not just blowing smoke up her ass. Like it yeah. is really hard to find someone who is able to do that level of work and focus and yeah mm -hmm. i mean she will be heavily involved in season two as well yes uh do you mind if i use the bathroom really quick <laughs> yeah. no go for it <laughs> it's every it's every stream that's going to be on the on the bingo. you are you are well hydrated you just need to cut down on the blood buddy mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be back. Oh. I'm joking. I, I hope everybody knows that I'm joking. <laughs> joking? Well, we are, I know we're close to the end of our discussion tonight. And I hate that. Like, I knew that from our past discussion with Jack, that the topic and his energy was intoxicating. And I know it's not a spell. I know it's because of the great energy that he's putting out. I just knew that, oh my God, I get two more just like him. <laughs> I don't well. want this to end. We can always come back. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's geeky yeah. things. I also write games. I do lots of fun stuff. We have plenty of things we can talk about. Definitely, Michelle, you're coming back. I'm just going to hold on to your frame here. <laughs> can't leave. And then when this all gets funded, when this gets when? funded, Command Kickstarter, y'all. Command <laughs> Kickstarter, yes. Yeah, I mean, it. I, I imagine we're already booking like podcast interviews and things like that for the release. Um, people are really like holding on to, I want to do an article or mm. an, a, an interview for the release because I want to be able to like talk about the content itself. So mm -hmm. if you are interested in that, like keep in touch. I mean, I'm not going to get rid of me now. <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous like we we get so real and raw in new blood especially mm -hmm. i can't speak as much for in human beings because i'm doing more of my usual remote viewing stuff so i'm not there yeah. for a lot of the stuff that's actually happening i'm pretty sure that there's some wild stuff that happens there too but like i especially with the paranormal tv stuff uh the way that works is they're like you're a psychic well i'm a psychic vampire our audience is going to understand psychic we're going to leave the vampire hmm. part off so they don't there's a whole portion of my identity that never makes it to camera. Yeah. Uh, you don't get to see the whole story or like why I can do the things that I do, why I'm better at some things than others, like where my ideas come from um, and just like what my lived experience is like. And I've gotten very comfortable not sharing some of that because it's, mm -hmm. there's a risk of like, this is going to sound weird, but also I, hope at this point i've proven that i'm not just some like wackadoo who's mm -hmm. talking out of my wazoo uh some woogity a-hole yeah. woogity <laughs> yeah woogity but that like yes this is gonna sound woo and also this is what my life is like this is why i've written the things that i have like you earned it you done earned it you oh, done no. earned earned <laughs> yeah i mean i i think um i think it's nice because the people who are 
like interested in watching an episodic show where the, the formula that you see on TV, um, but with like our twist and through our feminist, like queer lens in human beings is like the digestible show. Mm -hmm. And that's why we did that show. Cause it was like, okay, here's your, like your request for an episodic show. Um, but for the people who are like, I want to go all the way down the rabbit hole. I want to possibly like feel an initiation in the process of, or, or trigger an initiation in the process of watching this. <laughs> That's hey, what new, new I do. I do. I really do. <laughs> Bozo, you better watch. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to inhale it once it's live, <laughs> after it's fully funded in four to three days, depending on when you're watching this. You guys make this happen because they deserve it and you need it. Yeah. Ooh. You know, the other thing about in human beings that it's not just the feminist lens and the queer lens, but a lot of the TV shows that you see tend to, if you see witchcraft or magic, like it's very sanitized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sort of like, you know, Buffy, Willow, Wiccan magic. <laughs> Much deeper than that, they don't yeah. get into. But right. you've got folks who practice a bunch of different things. Nothing is as simple as just like, I'm a Wiccan. Uh, and you get to see like in real time, people's practices, how that looks, how that, how what you bring to an investigation also influences the investigation. Yes. And how what you experience is something that you take away and changes you. Forever. Yeah. Amazing. You guys. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> so sweet from the bottom of my heart <laughs> thank you for this conversation and allowing me to be part of it um i i don't say this lightly i do feel like we have been brought together at least the universe brought you into my scope for a reason and it has begun a chain of events of change of thinking a realization an awakening perhaps and I am so grateful for it, and I'm so grateful to have seen what the Fang Fam and the vampire community looks like, because it is nothing but love, and I mm -hmm. fucking am obsessed. Mm -hmm. It's my new addiction, and I'm not lying. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Uh, <laughs> but I know we are out of time, because you have so many new amazing things that you got to keep going. You've got four days, and you can't waste a minute. Thank you yeah, so much for being is. here. And thank you all of you at home, whether you're watching back on podcast, watching back on podcast or listening on YouTube, whatever you're doing, or here live in the Twitch chat. Thank you for being part of the conversation. We do this each and every Monday night, 8.30 Eastern Standard, live on Twitch. And then T, of course, my co-host, goes live on Wednesdays, doing whatever the dopamine hits. Maybe that's painting minis. Maybe that's playing games with all of you. Maybe that's just hanging out because everybody needs that community. And then Thursdays are ongoing campaign of fate core it's my first homebrew so wish me luck it's my new favorite thing just above the vampire community just the scotch just the scotch <laughs> so come back hang out and thank you all for the follows tonight i wasn't interrupting my guest tonight every five fucking seconds for <laughs> follows because i couldn't but i wanted to you guys are on un unhinged Unfucking hinged. <laughs> Ugh. Michelle, Fen, Jack, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Me. Yeah, Both thank you. The work you're doing, don't literally you fucking stop. Always a pleasure. Seriously. Yeah, you're, you're uh, like such a. <laughs> I have a term I use. It's munch. It just means like you're very cute and like sweet and genuine, <laughs> oh, and then like. You're so munchy. <laughs> you are a genuine munch. Can I add that to my resume? <laughs> Hi, I am a munch. <laughs> and all Kush said so. You can ask. Give her a call. Cinnamon roll. Cinnamon no, but really, thank you. Cinnamon. Keep up the good work. All of you, we are taking this amazing vampire energy to Let's Get Rolling, also a big family part of the show. So stick around for the raid. Um, but until next time, I am Bozer. Who's this? Oh, I'm oh. Michelle <laughs> I'm Fenelankush. And I'm the vampire Jack Townsend. And until next time, you just keep kicking out. Kicking <laughs> out. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>